Gamwell millionaire absent. Gamwell's most prosperous son, Arthur Conthwaite, will not be seen at church over the next few weeks. Mr. Conthwaite has apparently left the area for a time, possibly for a vacation, or in relation to his studies. Some mystery surrounds Mr. Conthwaite's departure, as it came without notice. However, an inspection of his mansion and grounds by Sheriff Whitford has revealed no cause for alarm. The last person to speak to Mr. Conthwaite was his attorney, Mr. Walter Dodge, on the 7th of this month. At that time, he gave no indication of his imminent departure, but according to Mr. Dodge, he did seem quite preoccupied, no doubt with his travel plans. We all know well that besides being a Gamwell landowner, Mr. Conthwaite is also a millionaire, a scholar, a philanthropist, and an explorer. He may well be off laying the groundwork for some future exciting expedition, or perhaps just relaxing for a time in New York. Gamwell citizens will no doubt remember fondly Mr. Conthwaite's numerous generous donations to local charities and to the town library, and join with us in wishing him a safe and happy journey. Dodge Brothers, Attorneys at Law, 14 Main Street, Gamwell, January 30th, 1925. I have been referred to you by a mutual friend. As his attorney, I am very interested in locating the missing Mr. Arthur Cornthwaite, and our associate mentioned your name as being one connected to Mr. Cornthwaite. Thus, I have taken the liberty of contacting you. I am a partner of an established legal firm in Gamwell. Mr. Arthur Cornthwaite is one of our clients, and as his attorneys, we hold certain documents in trust for him. It would appear that Mr. Cornthwaite has departed without notifying us of his movements. This leaves us in a quandary as to how to manage his estate in his absence without his authority on such matters. We would like you to locate Mr. Cornthwaite and obtain from him his wishes in respect of this matter, or better still, request that he contact us. If it should, heaven forbid, transpire that Mr. Cornthwaite is no longer with us, then we will need some evidence of same to proceed with his wishes as outlined in his last will and testament. Hopefully this is an unnecessary contingency, but one which we must nevertheless consider in the light of Mr. Cornthwaite's mysterious departure. I hope that you are free to give this matter your immediate attention, and would like to extend an invitation to you to attend an interview at our offices as soon as is convenient to discuss both the details of the situation and your professional fees. Anticipating a prompt reply, yours faithfully, Walter Dodge. The Apocalypse Players present The Cracked and Crooked Mance A scenario by Mark Morrison, updated for 7th edition Call of Cthulhu by Lynn Hardy. Starring Joseph Chance as Rose Damien. When she started with nothing, her mother was a member of a religious group, a Christian sect, uh, and she would go dancing with the old timers down in the bayou. So it was pretty wild. Uh, but then her mother had to move north when Daddy died. Dan and Macalea as Sebastian Palmer. Born in Ireland, and he's Catholic, about... Ten years back, had a horrific accident in which a petrol tank exploded um, that he was being made to fit without the right experience. So he's got very severe third-degree burns down one side of his face, down his arm and to his hand. And uh, he's now part of the union movement, trying to unionise workers around the States. And Dan Wheeler as Dr Johannes Bergman. Quite gaunt, uh, frail, sort of pale and clammy appearance, but quite, you know, bookish wears a monocle, has deep, dark, like slightly wired eyes. Um, he doesn't look particularly well. I am Dominic Allen, your keeper of arcane lore. We join our investigators on a cold and crisp February morning as they arrive in the small Massachusetts town of Gamwell for their auspicious meeting with the Dodge brothers and to hopefully uncover the truth behind the mysterious disappearance of their old associate, Mr. Arthur Cornthwaite. You've arrived in Gamwell. I don't know if you've all taken a car or whatever, but it is, I mean, it's out of the way. It's not, um, 
it's a, it's a place you sort of it's a stopping off place somewhere else just to, to somewhere else um, you might stop off and buy you know supplies there or have a break um, but it's not I mean it's not the smallest place either there's a few places uh, worth noticing um, as you pass into the town trying to find the Dodge Brothers office uh, you see there's a boarding house there's a town hall police station, fire station, there appears to be a newspaper office, which must be the Gamwell Gazette. Um, there's a small, a modest sort of town library, um, a very modern looking church and a cemetery, and uh, a, a fair few shops. Uh, but it's it's slap in the middle of all this sort of vast farmland and Massachusetts countryside. Was there a train station? Did you say there was a train station? There is no train station. Right. Nice. Um, with buses. Um, but it's like a, you know, rickety country bus. It goes, you know, from uh, from Arkham to uh, it, well, it stops at Gamwell, and then uh, there is a there is a bus that goes to uh, Innsmouth, I think, but it's uh, it's not regular. Hmm. <laughs> Thank Christ. <laughs> Out along the coast, you can see someone waiting for it. What, what does he look like? Like <laughs> he's <laughs> tall and he's like in a dark coat, and he's right. He's furiously writing everything down. <laughs> When you glance over his shoulder, it's, it's mostly adjectives. I think as, as the car drives past that um, tall, somewhat stooped figure, uh, Rose just involuntarily finds her hand going to the pendant that her mother gave her, <laughs> which has the strange symbol of the fish and the star combined. Mm. It's a precious item that was given to her from the, uh, from the old Episcopalian days, the Church of the uh, Stars Prismatic. Uh, that she attended as a child. But then the car just drives on, obviously. So it doesn't take long to find the Dodge Brothers' office. It's a shabby little place, this office. Um, It's, uh, you know, there's a staircase. It's above a shop. Um, There's a staircase at one side that you go up. um, And at the top there is a door that says um, Dodge Dodge Brothers Attorneys at Law. Um, And then underneath it says Reginald Dodge, Walter Dodge, Herbert Dodge. But that's in reverse order. Herbert Dodge, Walter Dodge, Reginald Dodge. So, uh, yeah, you can you can hear them talking inside. The door is slightly ajar, in fact, and it's got that sort of frosted glass. Um, you all happen to bump into each other on the stairs, for expediency's sake. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, no, no, after you, young man. Thank you. You have an appointment? Oh, I do, yes. Um, with, um, I believe it's a Walter Dodge, attorney at law. Ah. Ah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm here to see uh, the Dodge uh, brothers as well. Yeah, don't know which one. Oh well, if you forgive me, I, I think I recognise that face coming up behind you there. Oh, Rosalie, it is it is Rosalie, isn't it? Why you remember me? Oh, well, that's so kind. It's the doctor, is it not? Of course. Uh, how could I forget a face like yours? Yes. <laughs> well, you'll have to forgive me that I, I can't remember your name, Doctor. Wasn't it a? Uh... Wolf. While this is happening, I just walk off up the stairs. Uh, <laughs> Johannes, Johannes Wolfgang, but uh, Hans, please, call me Hans. Hans. Oh, enchanté, so good to see you. Um, yes. she, she sweeps her broad-brimmed hat, which I think is her only feminine article, really, in that sense. <laughs> what? Sweeps it off and, and gives you a slightly outrageous bow. <laughs> what an extraordinary coincidence. I, I take it we are all here for... The purpose of seeing the Dodge process. You're all squeezed at this point onto a, about a three foot square landing. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so the the bow is like it's it really gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, but she still does it. Ladies yes. first, as they say. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, in which case, I should I should definitely make way for you then, shouldn't I, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just oh, oh. your American sense of humor. This young man, um, I don't believe that I've met him. Have you had the pleasure? No. Oh well, my apologies. Palmer, Sebastian Palmer. That's a pleasure to meet you, Mister Palmer. Uh, she, she she holds her hand out. Ah, I um, which hand does she hold out? The right hand. That's good. I uh, shake with my my right. It's quite a firm shake. Oh, well, pleasure to meet you. Is it is it is it self evident that that the hand is burnt as well, or is it just uh, the other hand is the left hand? 
and the left side of the face. But obviously the that, face that she would do. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think she unapologetically studies you. Mm. And uh, yeah, well, hello, Doctor. Is it uh, Doctor Johannes Wolfgang Bergman? Yes. Um, oh, okay. Pleasure. Yes. Pleasure, Doc. Uh, Likewise, a great pleasure. I'm fascinated to see what the Dodge brothers have to ask us about. Uh, were you a friend of uh, Mr. Cornthwaite? Oh, yeah, so we are here for the same thing. Uh, I wouldn't say a friend, no, more uh, an associate, perhaps, but uh, mm. yeah, he seemed like a decent enough fella. Yes, very much so. Mm. Uh, interesting man. Uh, I, I, his letter um, startled me, but... Mm. Intrigued me as well. I, I suggest we go in and hear more about it. Yeah, well, yeah, let's do that. And I, um, is there a door that's obviously the thing to knock on? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's got, it's, got the, it's got the names on and it is slightly ajar. Um, but they don't seem to have noticed you on the landing because you can hear them talking. I'm just going to walk straight up and give it a rap because I'm... In, in those split seconds, could I do a listen check? Yes, I was about to say the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perhaps for different reasons we're doing it, but... Uh... Uh, wait! Darn it! I, I heard nothing be- because of your American yabbering. <laughs> yabbering! Well, part of me, Doc. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done uh, an 11. That's a pleasing listen check. Um, <clears throat> Rose manages to hear... Um, it, it's, it's nothing particularly exciting, but actually, actually, well, maybe it is relevant. You hear them saying... Um, well, I mean, if we don't hear anything, it, when do we involve the police? We can't involve the police. Mm. Another year like this, and we're going to be out on our hide quarters. We're going to be broke. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as soon as you knock on the door, you hear that you hear three distinct voices go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> "Oh, oh, come in, come in, please." Um, <clears throat> you're confronted by as you step into the room stood around one table in the middle. There are three um, uh, diminutive men. (laughs) The tallest is about five foot six, my height. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, I'm like a giant to these people. (laughs) Yes. He's six foot two. (laughs) Literally. Um, One of them, they all look like within a couple of years age of each other they all bear a strong family resemblance um one is sort of balding one has a mustache and one has a very sort of um pallid kind of one expression <laughs> the marx brothers <laughs> yeah <laughs> very much so um they all look incredibly worried and stressed um their office is um it's really it's a bare room pretty much with a desk for each of them and a table in the middle there's a, f- a few filing cabinets and this you know the paper is just sort of papers and documents stacked all over the place the windows are grubby um but they sort of look in amazement and then one of them steps forwards the one who um doesn't have a mustache and has full head of hair and a bow tie and he says oh hello um i'm walter dodge i uh, i you must be um uh, uh, Madam Dame and 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 then Doctor um Doctor Bergman and 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 you must be Mister Palmer. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for replying to my letter. I I amazed you come so quickly. Thank you. Not at all. In fact, let me reassure you, Mister uh, Mister Dodge. There's no need for the police. I couldn't help but overhear as we came in. Well, Mr. Palmer, uh, the good Dr. Bergman and myself will readily readily be your first form of investigation before such drastic needs. She drapes herself across the nearest chair. (laughs) Um, They all sort of look quite abashed and, uh, and, and sort of, Go oh oh uh, 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 and the the one with the uh, the balding older one comes up and even though you've already sat in the chair he sort of he sort of touches it as if to sort of <laughs> tuck you in with it oh there you are madam I think the look is withering but she's busy lighting up another cigarette she's not six foot two that's too tall she's six foot <coughs> uh, please please yes please do sit um please sit oh thank you very much I pull up a chair as well. I'm I'm happy standing, thank you. 
Yeah. Uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm Walter Dodge. This is my uh, older brother Herbert, and this is my younger brother Reginald. Um, we we are the uh, the Dodge brothers. Um, almost involuntarily, involuntarily, Reginald claps his hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, in which case, shut it, stop it. <laughs> so, so without sort of one moment she's just lying there, draped, so looking a little bit like a kind of leopard. And then suddenly she's on her feet at the clap and she starts doing a little clap number. <laughs> throwing her... Step or change. And, yeah, and I'm going to do my dance check. Oh. It's a zero six. Ah. Oh. I mean, I didn't really ask for a... Con- it wasn't really contested there. Um, <laughs> what are you hoping to achieve? But I'll let you have the... I'll let you tick the box. <laughs> I mean, she's not going anywhere, let's face it. It's a one and done here. But uh, she puts on a little show for all... <laughs> And and then ends up right next to the guy and does a single clap and then winks at him. Yeah, Herbert, the older one, he bursts into a, applause. Gets an erection. <laughs> Quite right. And Walter says, well, that was marvellous, um, but we should probably get down to business. I couldn't um, agree more before the doctor starts to analyse me. I am... Um, I the, the, At that comment, there's a sort of, like, a, a smile flickers across my face. I, I flick open my doctor's case and take out my notepad... Um, without sort of opening the case properly so you can't see anything else in it. I just draw the notepad out and I close the case again. (laughs) Yes, well, I'm sure you've probably got questions, but um, the the long and short is we we haven't heard from Mr. Cornthwaite in in quite a while now and we're getting awful worried. Um, Obviously, we're we're happy to to pay for your... um, If you need some time in Gamwell, uh, I mean, I don't know. we, We haven't had time to really ask around, but... Um, I'm sure maybe 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 people here might know, but you could ask around here. And if if you're staying in Gamwell, we're happy to pay for your accommodation at the boarding house for <clears throat> for one night. And then, um, um, we, obviously, we recommend going up to his house and having a look there. We can furnish you with the keys. Um, we we also haven't really had time to properly investigate there. The, the sheriff went up there and said it all seemed um uh fine. The older one goes, we went up there, we went up there as soon as we thought we should. <laughs> to which the younger one says, well, we only just, really, we didn't go in, though. We didn't go in. <laughs> uh, what, what do you mean, you didn't go in? We stood at the gate and we shouted. Do, do you mind me asking why you d- didn't go into the house and why you stood at the gate? Well, um, it would have been impolite. Um, could I do a psychology check to see whether yes. uh, it's anything more than it would have been impolite? Uh, ah, I have rolled a zero nine. That is an extreme success. Yeah, he's you. You spot the moment where he thinks of what to say. Mm. So you know, there's a bit of some sort of check that he's done on himself. This older guy, Herbert, and then he says, um, "Oh, besides." Access to the Fitzgerald mansion is 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 always difficult. To which the uh, the the middle brother gives him a look and he says, uh, "Cornthwaite Mansion." Obviously, you don't know uh, where he is. That's the point of us being here. But uh, had he talked recently about uh, any future expeditions? Anything uh, maybe more local than his uh, continental journeys? Um. Mm. Not, not particularly. Um, uh, he, 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 uh, he, he just not long ago, not long ago, he got back from from South America. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Good relationship with the local, uh, the local police force in South America. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know if there is one, but here. Oh. Oh, sh- the sheriff is 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 a is a very um fair man. He's a he's a thorough, he's a thorough man. He's a good sheriff. Oh yeah, I wouldn't bring his character into doubt at all. Huh. So uh, one night, you say, in the uh, the local. Uh, y- uh yes, I, I let's can't... talk expenses. I have my car with me. I don't know how these guys are traveling. Um, gas mileage, things like this. We uh we agree that in advance, or do I just? Bring you the receipts. Ah, well, um, well, uh, we could talk about that. Yes, um, uh, we're willing to pay a hundred dollars uh, to locate Mister Cornthwaite, and a hundred dollar bonus if um, if you can get the answer within the week. Okay, 
Expenses on top? Agreed. Um, anything else you can tell us? <laughs> well, wait a minute. I mean, a uh, hundred dollars covers an awful lot of expenses, and it's not far. We're asking you, you know, Gamwell, you can explore on foot, and and, and the the mansion is well, only. Um, is this uh, one hundred dollars each? Uh, How much is your last client worth to you? Is there like a young clerk or anything like that? Is there any a receptionist or anything like that? Literally the three of them. Skeleton staff. It's just the three brothers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, um, but you can give me a charm or a persuade roll if you're if you or nah. if you want to. Uh, or not, intimidate what? actually with um with that uh, line of questioning about their last client. I don't want to go full intimidate. I'll try persuade. Okay. I was uh, just checking because uh, one hundred dollars each. I could work with that kind of payment, but if it was one hundred dollars between the three of us, I think that would not really be sufficient for this sort of sensitive. Yeah, the old um, expenses persuade didn't work. Bad roll. I would like to try a persuade <laughs> with the comment I just made that yeah, hundred dollars each would be more than fair. But between the three of us, it's really not sufficient. And uh, woo-hoo, that's a zero three. That's an extreme success. Okay. Well, uh, they they um, they sort of look at each other, slightly worried, and then uh, the youngest one says. Um, well, of course, a hundred dollars each. In fact, uh, two hundred dollars each with a hundred dollar bonus if each if you get it by the end of the week. And the other two sort of look at him and then grudgingly nod. Um, I I have a look at the the other two members of the my party and see whether they are happy with what I've negotiated. The team. I give you a sort of a solid nod. I think I, I give you an amused raised eyebrow. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that reaction. In fact. I yeah, yeah, go on. I think you have yourself a deal, but for my own part, I have a few more questions that I think would be useful to ask you. Of course. So uh, tell me about the Fitzgerald mansion. <laughs> um, no, please finish <laughs> your mouth for <laughs> mm, mm. Prawns. Uh, Walter says that Oh, uh, no, 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 uh, Cornthwaite Mansion. Well, yes, but one of you did say the Fitzgerald Mansion. Oh, that's a, a slip of the tongue. Uh, Herbert's a bit older than us. Um, uh, it used to be called the Fitzgerald Mansion before it was purchased by Mr. Cornthwaite back in 1919. And uh, can you tell me anything about the Fitzgeralds? Oh well, I mean the Fitzgeralds. Uh, they, 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 they. Well, they, they lived there a long time ago. It, it's, it's changed hands many times since then. It's just the, the name stuck for some reason with the locals. Hmm. I presume the local library has a. Oh, oh yes, yes, the library. Uh, I'm sure if you speak in the library, uh, you'll be able to find a bit of a history about the house. But that's not really relevant. I mean, uh, um, this is all, you know, <laughs> very recent. Well, I hate to um, press my case, but uh, you said you did not go into the house because it would be impolite. Uh, Presumably, Mr. Cornthwaite lives there alone? Oh, yes, he lives quite alone. So if he was missing, what would be impolite about knocking on the door? Well, um... And then the youngest one pipes up again, Reginald. He says, well, last time he was here, he seemed... He, he he seemed under the weather, and if he was sick, we wouldn't want to disturb him too much. So we stood outside the gate and said, Hello, is anybody home? No one came to the door, which means he either isn't home, or he's um not very well and wasn't able to come to the door, or, or, or he's dead. Uh, ex- excuse me, one, one more question, uh, Mr. Dodge. Are you really paying us $200 each plus $100 bonus to go and find out whether he is in his house, dead or alive? This seems unlikely to me. Yes. Well, I mean, if he's dead, we'll need proof. And if he's not in his house, we'd like to know where he is. So it's not a case of knocking on the door. Obviously, any idiot could do that. Well, but you did not. Well, no, because we had reasons. So any idiot could knock on the door, but you are sub-idiot and therefore could not? (laughs) 
We're the people who have just agreed to pay you nearly three hundred dollars each. Well, the, uh, it, with 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 respect or very little of it, you just talked me into giving you that, and now you're trying to talk me out of it. More evidence to my case that you may possibly be sub idiot, and you know I know that idiot is a uh, scientific parameter. Hey, 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 hey talk, 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 talk. All right, if you want us to pay you less, we'll pay you less. Hey, 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 no, 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 he didn't mean that. He's uh, he's foreign. They have these weird uh, these weird ways. Um, Doc, you're a good negotiator, but I think you've gone a bit far this time. Um, <laughs> So, just to be clear, the only person who's been in that house is the local sheriff, since he went missing, Mr. Kellogg, or yes. whatever his name is. Yes. And then Herbert, the oldest one, goes, that we know of. Ah. Well, I guess you always got to suspect foul play. While this has all been going on and I've been observing, could I do a psychology check on, on these three brothers and their desperate... Yeah. Throwing of money. And... And did they appear in the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> they definitely did. Um, it's another really good psychology role. Not quite as good as uh, Dr. Bergman's, but uh, it's a zero eight. 8 Great. And they're obviously hiding something, but... It's not so much that they're hiding... Well, they are hiding something, I suppose. You get the impression that they are... Um, they're, they're very cagey about the house, the history of the mm. house specifically. Mm. There's something they, they're uncomfortable about with that house. But... Um, it doesn't sound like there's anything sinister going on from their point of view. They do seem a bit desperate, but given this, the state of their office, it sounds like they really do need this client. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's a lot for them to be paying, but at the same time, he's a wealthy guy. He's so like, wealthy, if they can yeah. retain his... Yeah. Yeah. And if he's, you know... If he's popped his clogs, I guess they can work with the will and wrangle themselves some money either way, but... And in fact, one of them says, um, well, listen, um, it sounds like you, you, you're at least considering taking this, uh, this, this engagement. Oh, yeah. I am committed. I cannot speak for my associates, but... Never been committed, but, you know, I'll, I'll do the job. Well, you stick with me, maybe that will change. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. Dear Art is one of the only funnier people on the uh, Municipal Art Board that I could think of. I'd be terribly sad if anything bad had happened to him, but he does like to swan off to these exotic places. You said that he came back from South America. Do you have any knowledge of what he was doing there? Uh, he was on an expedition. I mean the mm. nature of the expedition. I understand. Oh, I don't bother. We have his accounts. You're welcome to have a look through. Um, the last thing I was going to say was that... Um, We've got your rooms at the boarding house for tonight, like I said, and then if you're going up to the house tomorrow uh, or or whenever, uh, then you're welcome to stay in the house, provided um, that no damage is done to the property. If any damage is done to the property, then we, um, we would obviously have to uh, either um, reduce it from your fee or, um, or otherwise um, forego the fee. That sounds quite reasonable in theory, but... If you have not been inside the house, how will you know whether the damage is done by us or whether it has been done previous to us? You'll supply a photographer. Should we? Uh, you send a photographer to take uh, preliminary photographs, or we draw sketches and say, "Oh, there's a little bit of damage to the banister here." And the no, no, no. I mean, scuffed. we'll be very reasonable. Obviously, wear and tear is to be expected, and the sheriff has been there recently, and he said there is some, you know, there's some damp issues. Um, so. Obviously, I'm talking about, you know, if you break a window or... Um... This is, excuse me again, I, I'm sorry to be talking so much, but this seems a very very peculiar thing to uh, require. Why would you think that we would break a window? Who do you think we are? You employ us, you pay us $200 a piece to investigate the disappearance of this man, and you're telling us not to break a window? Do you think we are a bunch of uh, undergraduate no, students no, no, who are going no, to have no. a party that in was, this mansion? That was just an example. We don't think you're going to break a window. <laughs> and they all involuntarily glance at Sebastian Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm utterly used to that, and I just smile at them with my half-burned lips. <laughs> As a... Uh, Ms. Rose here suggested I would like to have a quick look at those accounts, primarily because I was actually, uh, Mr. Cornflakes, he actually, uh, he tried to, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Cornthwaite. I, no, no, Mr. Cornthwaite, he, he liaised with me on the hiring of some of the, uh, some of the workers to help with the expedition. I'd just like to make sure they all, uh, got back in one piece and were, uh, properly rem rem 
remunerated. So uh, yeah, I'll have a quick look at those, if that's all right. Yes, they, they, um, one of them goes over and starts like going through the filing cabinet mm. and comes back with a, a set of accounts. Well, feel free to have a look. Surely it's not that much to leave through if it's just the last expedition before he came back. It's not like I'm not going to be looking through the whole tome necessarily. I, c- I might want to at some point, but... Uh, could we take it away with us so that maybe we could peruse it in the boarding house? Oh, oh no, no, we, 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 can't, we can't let them up to the office. Understood. No, I understand. That's fair, that's fair. Unfortunately, you will, you will have to give me an accounting role. Oh, yeah, happy to, um, happy to. For once, I am happy to do that. <laughs> and it will stay, till, still take you a bit of time, so I don't know if, if, you're all, if you're all doing that or if... Um, Maybe the role is me sort of opening it and just having a look at how detailed it might be to like mm. sort of analyze because obviously these guys are chaotic who knows what their bookkeeping's like um mm. so let's do the roll on that oh two on a 55 oh. accounting oh wow very um, good but if if it seems like it's going to take a while anyway i might just turn to the others and say i'll meet you at the boarding house but uh i'm gonna have a quick look through this um so uh feel free i i meet you there should we say in uh, I don't know how long? How long does my, do I estimate this might take me? Half an hour. Half an hour. Okay. Twenty minutes. Fine. I'll say. Um, shall I meet you guys there? And uh, <laughs> you guys, I'm so casual. Shall I meet you, uh, <laughs> you two there in uh, half an hour, so we can discuss our next moves. That seems wise. Um, what 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 time is it? Remind me. My watch is. Oh, it's probably like eleven. <laughs> Morning. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Good. Yeah. While this conversation is going on and the and the, uh, the material is being brought forth, is there anything of value left on these desks at all? Mm, nothing amazing. I mean, there's like a a Newton's cradle and some pens and yeah. Uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> there's nothing of some nice writing paper. But other, other than the writing paper, there's nothing of any particular value in the. No, not really. They do have a safe. Yeah. Uh, but you suspect it's probably for keeping people's, you know, yeah, yeah. stuff for them. Mm. Yeah. Information rather than... Mm. Uh, <laughs> An office filled with thousands of executive desk toys and no paperwork. I think, I, think, <laughs> I think she wanders over somewhat mysteriously, rather suddenly, to whichever window she might be able to get to and, and looks out of it. It seems to be slightly ignoring proceedings. Uh, yeah, you see across the street there is... You can see the the boarding house from where you are, Haggerty's boarding house. Haggerty's. A couple of shops. Uh, there's a cemetery, sort of like there's a, in the middle of the, you know, there's a little, there's a sort of green, and then on the opposite side, there's the cemetery. Um, uh, the youngest, I, I know what she'll do. She'll go up to the youngest member of the um, uh, Dodge Brothers. Who's about 57, by the way. Nice, okay, my age. Perfect, weak. Um, weaker than knees. Uh, and she'll say, I'm so sorry, I seem to have mislaid my lighter. Do you, do you, could you possibly do me the honours? And she puts her uh, cigarette holder over to him. He, he fiddles in his pocket, comes out with a zippo, he opens it, it drops, he drops it on the floor, he scrapes oh, well, it, pick it up. Uh, so, um, is it a decent-looking zippo? It's all right. Uh, yeah. could, I, could I do a dexterity check to try and catch it? Of course, yeah. Zero nine. Oh, oh, my God, we're rolling amazingly, all of us. I've got my lucky dice. Right, extremely well. That's yeah, so good. So far. So we're about to go down the shit. So I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I'll catch it, and I'll go, oh, no, don't worry. I'll, uh, I can I can do with that. And then I'll walk over to the um, window, light it, mm. and just put that in my pocket. Okay. <laughs> I, I notice even that brief fall before she snatches it, but all I do, all I do is sort of... You know, anyone watching will see my eyes dart and widen and then sort of breathe and sort of look down at the book again. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, uh, he, he's too spineless to say anything about the, the lighter, um, if he's even noticed. Um, so Sebastian Palmer begins leafing through these accounts. What do Rose and the, doc- the good doctor do so while that's going w- on? While Rose is engaged, the, the younger... Um, Mr. Dodge, <clears throat> I'd like to um, approach Herbert Dodge. Mm. Um, Split them. In one room, we're splitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Dodge, you um, you are clearly the, the senior partner as in this firm. 
Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, because I can tell you have an astute mind. I'm a psychologist, you see, and uh, I can tell an intelligent man just by looking. I've n- never met a psychologist before, but no. I'm excited to. There's a first time for everything. and um, Or a German. <laughs> Oh, very, very good recognition of my accent. Um, mm. Tell me, um, you perhaps have some sort of, and I'd sort of take him by the arm and steer him away from the center of the room and speak a bit more softly and say, it seems to me that you have a certain emotional reaction to the uh, the Fitzgerald mansion. Is this correct? And I'd like to do, if I can, a bit of psychoanalysis on him. Um, yeah, yeah. Give, yeah, give me a psychoanalysis. psychoanalysis? Is that yeah. fair? Yeah. It's a regular success. Oh well, you know, I'm. I I guess I'm a little superstitious, but uh, you see, um, I remember how things used to be. As he's speaking, I take out a cigarette and offer him a cigarette. Oh. Uh, no, thank you. I <clears throat> I don't partake. Um, but um, I put it away and I take out a little bottle of vodka and I offer him a little bit of that. <laughs> highly, um, he takes it from you. This is highly illegal, of course, and and he drinks it. <laughs> oh, mm, oh, wow. Mm, yes, yeah, just like it used to. Mm, mm. Oh, yeah, it's good. Mm. Mm, it's good water. Um, he says, glancing strong, at very, it. very strong water mm-hmm. is what I like to say. Takes me back to my, mm, takes me right back to my early fifties. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yes, it, people of a certain age in Gamwell, it's hard not to have an emotional reaction to that place. I suppose you, 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 you being from Germany, you, you won't know, but, but, um, well, some say it's a curse. And some say it's just uh, unfortunate, but but thirty years ago, uh, there was a horrible, um, well, there was a horrible murder at that house. It spooked people, you know. And that's not all. There's been other things happened there too, but way back when, um, before I was born, I suppose. Ah, uh, so this is ancient history that I could easily find out in the library. I, I, ancient. I want- <laughs> uh, turn of phrase. I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you very much for your 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 candid candidity. Is that how you would say it? Candidness. Candida. Candida. Thank you for your candida. <laughs> and uh, I uh, I I sort of leave him to it, thinking I might have pushed pushed my luck as far as it's going to go. Uh, yeah, he so, he he just sort of sits down at his desk and 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 seems to be just sort of trawling through paperwork. Um. What's Rose doing? I th- I, th- I think that um, well I think the pitch was that that um, the good doctor was involved with that while while Sebastian and I were involved with our document and and lighter scenario. So is it okay that we we draw back together with with Sebastian saying, "Do you guys want to go? Mm. Do you want to he- head back?" Yeah, maybe I do look up sort of slightly and see you smoking see the conversation sort of drifting slightly and just say, uh, hey, I, I might be another uh, half hour here. It's hard to say. Um, if you if you guys want to head down to the, uh, the, the the guest house, I can meet you there then and we'll discuss further steps. That sounds sensible. I, I wonder if perhaps we'd be able to... Um, would, be that, would that be the sort of place that we would get our lunch or is there somewhere else we'd, we'd find our lunch? Mr. Dodge, Walter, if I may. Lunch! Oh, lunch, <laughs> yes. Do they serve food in the boarding house, or is there a nice little cafe or restaurant where we might be able to get um, um, some cured meats, cheeses, maybe pickles, I know. a bit of bread? Well, there's a sandwich shop just downstairs. Mm. They do a nice pastrami on rye or... Um... Oh. Stop. No, no, stop, it. stop it now. You're killing me here. That <laughs> sounds lovely. <laughs> I, uh, if I know the wages of... The uh, the fucking people who work in boarding houses, I ain't eating their food, and that's no offense to them. Uh, let's go sandwich shop, maybe. Well, perhaps we should gather there. I wonder, Doctor, should we take a stroll over to the Parish Records? And I slip my arm through yours, as if it's the most natural thing in the world. <laughs> it's a small enough town, right? 
like we saw a lot of it on you know coming in so yeah i'll say sounds like we see a lot of it out the window if i finish Mm. early i'll come meet you there otherwise i'll see you down at the sandwich shop we will be in the library or in the sandwich shop cheers to that so you're heading to the library are you whatever whatever passes for the local records if there's a library that might be a good place to ask I think there is a library. My my ears pricked up at the mention, either by the keeper of the arcane law or perhaps one of the Dodge brothers, but somebody mentioned the town library and I wrote it down in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, well, you, you there is a small uh, wooden building uh, just quite near the church that over the, over the door there's a big wooden sign saying Gamwell Public Library. Um, it's... Um, it's it's modest, but it's crammed. I mean, it's um, it's got plenty of books, but it is it is it's what it is. Um, sort of clapboard, whitewashed kind of building. And as you come in, there's a there's a young uh, black woman. Um, she's very smartly dressed. She's sort of wearing her hair in a, in a sort of chignon chignon. Uh, <laughs> That's how I'd say. She's uh, tapping away on a little typewriter at the desk as you come in, and she looks up at you over over a set of spectacles. Hello. I am. Um, I sort of nervously nudge Rose forward. <laughs> well, hello, my dear. I was hoping that you might be able to help us. Um, this is Doctor Bergman. Uh, my my name is Madame Damien. I I, oh. I wondered if. Um, I wonder if we'd be able to gain some access to the records of the, uh, what was it you called it again, Dr. The Fitzgerald? Um, the Fitzgerald? The uh, Fitzgerald mansion. mansion. Oh. Oh. Um, I lean forward conspiratorially with a, with, a, with a suggestion of invitation rather than intimidation uh, and say, it's regarding Mr. Conthwaite, but could we keep that between you and me and the good doctor? Uh, do me a Charm Thank roll. You. That's sort of what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that performance was perfect for the role. A southern charm roll, please. Does that mean I get a bonus? Does that mean do I get a southern charm roll? All southern charm rolls. You... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Let me just get the rules up, Dom, but I'm pretty yeah. sure. Because <laughs> uh, I could really do be with I could really do with a bonus die. <laughs> but if you're not gonna give it to me, I totally understand. Yeah, so Obviously, having absolutely aced the Dodge Brothers' office, she's a bit cocksure of herself. I think she just leans a little too far over, and she 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 catches the cigarettes on your breath. <laughs> well, it's not just the cigarettes; it's it's also the kind of intense alien nature of her. She's like six foot tall and like a skeleton, <laughs> viewed at the wrong angle. She could look like a worst nightmare, even though she's sort of glacially attractive, and and she's um, slightly too. Far- would you like to? Push the roll, or are you accepting a fail? Actually, do you know what? Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll... Um, or oh, you can spend luck. And I think I, I think the way I push the roll is I, I take this too high, 85, I think. Um, I take my pendant out, and I just coil it around my fingers, realising that I've overstressed myself, and I, I pull back a bit, and I say, I, kn- I knew Arthur, that is to say, I know him, and the Dodge Brothers are very concerned about his uh, him... I'm sure these small towns speak so easily. People talk, don't they? But but the doctor and I are very concerned for the gentleman in question. Is there any chance that we'd be able to access those records? I'm 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 sure that potentially we could make it worth your while. Uh, yeah, g- <laughs> but again, give me that uh, push roll. Again, with a with a sense of um, oh yeah, twenty four, boom. That's a, that's a hard success. The doctor is mopping his brow with his handkerchief. He could tell that things were kind of <laughs> touching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she sat on the desk by now with this manoeuvre. <laughs> it's that sort of late winter uh, weather as well, where it's kind of uh, it's damp outside and kind of slightly humid. It's cold but humid. Mm. That's not why he's sweating, but fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the atmosphere is suddenly very oppressive in this cramped library full of absorbent books. Um, uh, she sort of is mesmerised by your pendant. So what, what a lovely pendant. No, I think it was my mother. Um, oh, well, I, I, I have to say, um, not many people come in here asking about the Fitzgerald manse. Um, 
Um, those in Gamwell already know about it, and, and those outside, it's kept, well, it's kept quiet from. Um, uh, and I have to say, my, I'm actually writing a book about the local area. I'm something of a local historian. Um, um, let me find my notes. And, uh, she, uh, she, she goes into her desk and starts pulling out sort of, uh, copious notes, um, old newspaper clippings and, and all sorts. Do, and, uh, is she, is she into her desk enough that I could have a private word with Rose? Yeah, yeah. Sure, you carry on. Yes, Doctor? Miss, uh, Miss Ross, you, you seem to have, um, got some measure of this young lady and perhaps it seems that she is going to reveal an awful lot more than we might have hoped. So I wonder, would you like to stay with her and perhaps I could have a little look around the library? I, I know my way around the library and see what else I can find while we are here. That sounds very sensible. I would say Wolfgang. Uh, your, mm. Do you prefer your hand or Wolfgang? Please, Hans, Hans so my friends. Hans. Um, well, Hans, I think uh, be on your way and best of luck with you. And uh, Mio, I, I'm, I'm sure you will report back anything exciting that this young lady has discovered in her fascinating book writing enterprise. She smiles. And, uh, and he, uh, he uh, hurries off behind the nearest bookcase. Okay. She resists the desire to slap his buttock. <laughs> in, a, in a nice way. <laughs> um, um, well, let's start with um, with the doctor then. So, what you're just having a look through the bookshelves and seeing what kind of trying to get a measure of the of the library. Uh, yes. Well, I'm I'm I guess it, I'm getting the impression that Rose has somehow hit the jackpot in terms of this librarian being a, a, a font of information about the Fitzgerald Mansion. So I'm thinking I might be able to find something else about in in this library. Um, what I remembered hearing was that uh, Cornthwaite had was a major donor to the library. Mm. So I would like to see if I can find anything specifically about Cornthwaite, maybe related to him being a donor, or just generally in relation to his his interests, his expeditions. Okay, well, if you give me um. A library use roll. We'll see how you do. Just about a success. Great. So with Seb's accounting role and Dr. Bergman's um, uh, library use, let's find out what you've found out individually. So we'll start with Sebastian. You've spent a bit of time going through these um, accounts and a few things stand out. It's immediately obvious that Cornthwaite is incredibly wealthy and he's got, and he's going to be wealthy for a long time. He's got some incredibly sound investments. Right. Um, and sure enough, you come across his last major expedition, which was to South America in 1923 with your, um, Oh, the other things you notice straight away, the staff payroll at his mansion. <clears throat> there is a, a sort of a stipend that's paid out of his accounts directly to him. Yeah. as a lump sum that he must therefore then distribute privately to the employees. Right. So they're not individually listed on the accounts. It's just an attempt, presumably, to keep their identities private. Right. It's, so it's impossible to tell from that how many staff he has? Exactly. But yes, you, with your extreme success, yeah. you notice two other things that, that stand out. Um... Passage back from South America, he he, he organised quite the trip out there yeah. um, with, you know, organising specialists and experts to go with him, equipment, um, uh, supplies. Yeah. Coming back, only passage was booked for one person. That's not good. No. Um, and finally, the 7th of January, 1925, so uh, over... Uh, a little over a month ago, there was a purchase order for a a large amount. It was a a a, a dump a dumpster truck uh, to bring um, a supply of salt to the house. Oh fuck! Um, but according to the accounts, it was not fulfilled, so payment was never made. Um, right. 
that's the last thing on there. Can I do a little occult check? It's very unlikely I'll succeed, but the idea of bringing a lot of salt to a place. <laughs> Is that fair enough? Yeah. My occult's not high. Obviously, as Dan and I know certain things about that, but... um. Yeah, what is it? Fifty? No. Okay. No. No. No success. I don't. I don't really realize anything. It seems like an odd request, maybe, but yeah. Um, yeah. The Certainly. Dodge Brothers are there with you. You can ask them if you want to. Yeah. About anything that you've read. In. I think. Well, yeah. It's odd. If I finished, have I finished? Is that the last thing I sort of glean from uh, accounts? Yes. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I will turn to... Which is the one that hasn't been accosted yet by the other two? The middle brother. Oh, actually, I will say that um, you some of the expedition, you can you can work out where he where he went to initially, at least. Oh, OK. Um, he went to... Um, uh, he went to Lima and then purchased travel down to Puno. Um, hmm. and, then, and then you don't know, you know... Then all the other purchases were made, presumably on site, but the, right, right, right. the travel back was um, from uh, Rio de Janeiro. Ah. Um, That's a long way. I was going to say it's a yeah. fair old distance, right? Yeah, we know, it's a couple of thousand miles away. Do I know how they were travelling? I assume by, like, boat initially, and then, like, or am I wrong, like, train and then boat, or... Like, um, it doesn't really it, matter, it, I suppose. But. It's hard to say. Yeah, okay. Um, they, sh- they shipped out there. So I, I am going to turn to them and just initially just say, uh, huh, who, uh, who ordered the dumpster full of salt? Uh, Walter comes over and he says, well, um, uh, M- Mr. Cornthwaite requested it, yeah. and um, the, the, the amount was enough that it had to go through the books. Yeah, and clearly. And he asked us to, um, to execute the order, but... Mm. Um, just between you and me, he he was acting a little odd, mm. uh, so we weren't sure if it was some sort of, I don't know. It, it seemed like um, a, an unreasonable expense. Yeah. So we we held off until we um, we were I sure see, what he I needed see. it for. Hey. My thing, I I assumed it was because of snow or ice. Mm. Um, he does have a large grounds to maintain, but. The snow was not that bad this year, so maybe he was. It might have been paranoia. Paranoid, I was about to say. Yeah, I, 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 I ain't judging you for that. You gotta, you gotta keep these people in check sometimes. Who have well, I suppose money the sense, huh? If you live alone in a big mansion with large grounds, I suppose the idea of getting snowed in could be quite terrifying. Yeah, you ever been to the Overlook? Never. <laughs> well, never mind. Um... One other thing, uh, you don't have a record of. Uh, I may have been involved in, like, like you said, I've been involved in sort of higher helping him sort of find large groups of labourers or whoever he needs for like expeditions. I don't suppose there's any chance I'd be able to figure out how many people or the names of those who set off with him on the expedition, like from my um, own records, or would this be have to something that I'd have to run past? Them? Well, you probably have to go and cro- you'd probably have to go and look at your records. I would, yeah, yeah, which, which would take a long people. time, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, but yeah. I will just say, in that case, uh, seems uh, seems pretty odd that the uh, the passage back from uh, Rio was uh, just for the one person. Well, uh, perhaps I don't know. Perhaps they they decided to stay. Puno was so nice, they all uh, set up shop there. Well, I don't think they ended in Puno, I don't know. Uh, I, no, I'm I, joking. I... Oh. <laughs> but do you know of a place further south that they might have set up shop? It's a lot of men. To, Geography's uh... not my strong suit. Sure, sure. Neither's mine. I'm just, my strong suit is uh, looking after workers and uh, making sure they get treated well. And uh, there's a big gap right here in the middle of the accounts that makes me worried. We're not paying you to look after workers. Who says that? <laughs> the old guy. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just going to turn and look at him and wait for him to explain himself. Well, I mean, that's not that... You you could do what you like, but... Hey. Perhaps if you find Mr. Cornthwaite, you can ask him yourself. Listen, 
I understand. Listen, I have nothing against you gentlemen. You clearly worked worked to your fucking wits ends here. Pardon the language. Um, I got more of an issue with Mr. Kellogg and his treatment of the workers. So I, I agree. I agree. I just wanted to know if you knew more than you was uh, sort of saying. But I, I trust you. I trust you. Um, thank you for letting me look through these. Oh, any uh, any time, any time. Um, Great. I hope that was useful. Oh, I nearly forgot. And he goes over to his desk and he opens it and he says, here we go. Um, it, when you go up to the manse, mm. this is the front door key. Yeah. And this is the back door key. So this is the back door key and this is the front door key. Exactly. <laughs> And I, they look exactly the same, and I just juggle. <laughs> they look exactly hand. the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. You'll know which one's which because it won't open. <laughs> That's a very good if point. If it's wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, uh, I think that's pretty much all I had to ask you, gentlemen. We'll, uh, we'll get on with our work and hopefully get back to you very soon. All right then. <laughs> <laughs> At which point I'll leave them to their shenanigans and go and find the others. So, the doctor. So the first thing I did was nip behind a bookcase and um, and just get a little, just get a little, a little, a little tiny spot of cocaine out of my bag. Ooh. Um, just for a little, a little pep. Um. A little, uh, just a little, a little perk up. I felt like uh, sort of flagging a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, but that, that, that's all. That's uh, so my my reason for ducking out of you. That was my reason for getting getting away from. That was my main reason for getting away from uh, Miss Rosalie. But that done, that done, then that library check happens and. So you you notice the library is it's odd that it's so small and yet so many of the books seem to cover um well mainly anthropology. Hmm. Perhaps perhaps on a whim you pick one out, one of these anthropological books, hmm. and when you open it, it's got Arthur Cornthwaite's name written in the front. Um it's since been stamped, you know, Gamwell Library. Hmm. Uh but it's it must be one of his books. Uh, well, uh, can can I be any more specific about precisely what what sort of what it contains? This book, this anthropological tome. Um, this this one covers. Um, it's like um, a general history of um, human cultures of the South American basin. Okay. Um, fairly dry, fairly sort of like a, it's like a primer in South American anthropology, sort of rainforest stuff, rainforest stuff. Okay. Well, could I make a, a little survey of the anthropology section, seeing as that's where I found myself by, by chance and kindness of the keeper of the arcane law, um, to see whether... It, this is all about you know uh, South South American tribes and um, indigenous populations, or whether it's anthropology more broadly. It's um, it's it's there is some breadth to the anthropology, um, but it is heavily weighted towards South America. Yeah, mm. there's a few more general books, but a lot of it is sort of South American stuff. So my anthropology anthropology is quite good. I would like to see if I could use my anthropology skill to tell whether there is anything in this library which is uh which is unique, which is um uh is is there anything in this section that looks like I haven't. I haven't seen it before. I haven't seen anything on this subject matter before. Uh, does that make sense as a question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I think you probably. Mm, there's nothing that's outstanding as particularly um, weird, cutting edge, or weird, or unusual. Um, 
You could always ask the librarian, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking to the librarian, uh, Rose Damien, um, she's got all these uh, notes out about the book she's writing. Um, and um, she says, uh, well, the thing about the Fitzgerald Mance is, well, 30 years ago, there were um, a series of... of um, a very unpleasant murders. Um, uh, but that's not why we call it the Fitzgerald Mance. The Fitzgerald Mance, that was when it was built. The Fitzgeralds built the house. Um, and this is why people think it's a curse. Because 30 years before the Cohen murders, there were the Fitzgerald murders. Now, of course, that's all superstitious. It's just a coincidence. But, but look at this. And she finds you... Um, a couple of clippings, newspaper clippings. It's May 17th, 1895. Gamwell family slain in terrible attack. Mother and three children killed. Police seek missing father. A tragedy of awful proportions unfolded today in Gamwell when Mrs. Gloria Kerwin and her three children, Harold 5, Sarah 3, and Susan 2, were found brutally murdered on their estate north of Gamwell, the well-known Fitzgerald Mance. Deputy Whitford of the Gamwell County Sheriff's Office made the grisly discovery while making a routine inspection. I've never seen anything like this, the brave but shaken deputy told this reporter. They were all dead. The family had indeed been brutally and cowardly slain, struck down by repeated blows from an axe. Not even little Susan was spared from this hideous fate. No murder weapon has been discovered, and Mr. Arthur Cohen, the children's father, is presently missing. He is wanted by the police for questioning, although fears are also held for his safety. And then she says, and then, it took me a while, but I eventually found this. And it's, um, it's a newspaper clipping from August the 15th, 1865. Tragedy befalls Fitzgerald Hall. Horrific news has driven anguish through Gamwell this week with the tragic slaying of Mr. Albert Fitzgerald and his entire family. While convalescing from an injury sustained at the Battle of Appomattox, Virginia, John Fitzgerald is believed to have shot his father, his mother, Elmer, and his younger siblings, Simon and Grace, in a fit of mania before turning his weapon upon himself. Readers may remember William, the Fitzgerald's eldest son, having played a role in the Second Battle of Bull Run in 1862, suffering a wound and subsequently dying of his injuries. Notice of funeral arrangements to be announced. May 17th, 1895, August 16th, 1865. And where are we now? 1925. 1925. 30 years later, minus a few months. Um, but she's going on. But yes, you see, I mean, I think it's just coincidence. Um, the house was built in 1805 by the Fitzgeralds. Uh, they were a very wealthy family. Um, and so um, when uh, young Johnny Fitzgerald came came along and killed everyone when he came back from the war, um, that, that was when the house was then um, um, sold to the Ainsfields in 1866 and they lived there till 1894 um, and then they had to sell and move apparently they went broke um, then Arthur Kerwin purchased the house and moved in with his young family um, he was a, a New Yorker who'd made a lot of money moved out to the countryside um, and uh, yes and then he uh, in 1895 he he uh, he became psychotic apparently and and um murdered his family and then um well he's never been seen again 30 years ago how how interesting what was your name again don i don't think you gave it to me oh um i'm terribly sorry um my name is susan susan arwell hello susan you can call me susie she says smiling <laughs> <laughs> you you can call me rose well it's nice to meet you rose but yes, after the Kerwin uh, tragedy, um, no one ever, no one ever found Arthur Kerwin. The 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 rumor is that he's still out there somewhere, you know, plotting his revenge. But I think probably he he either fled the state 
uh, or or he took his own life and we just haven't found the body yet. Anyway, the house was then, uh, well, it was empty for a few years, uh, and then the Franklins bought it. Um, they were quite old. Martha died, and then um, and then Henry died, and and then and then and then Mister Cornway came along and 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 bought the place up in nineteen nineteen. Got a good deal for it, thanks to um, well, thanks to superstition, I suppose. Did you ever meet Arthur? Do you know Arthur? Oh, Mr. Cornthwaite is, um, uh, he's a great benefactor of the library. Um, yeah. In fact, most of these books are his. When he came back from uh, South America, he he came along and he bequeathed, well, bequeathed, he, he, he donated a, an enormous amount of books. This is only about a third of what he gave us. The rest is all stuck in boxes in the back because there just isn't space on the shelves. Mm, how interesting. Well, he, he always does love to make a donation, that man. Yes. Uh, he's been back since to borrow books out again. <laughs> Are you friends of Mr. Cornthwaite? Uh, I, I, you know, we were associates. We served on the Municipal Arts Board. Are you here to visit him? Well, we're here because we're concerned that he hasn't been in touch. Oh. Oh. But as I, but as I say, that's between us, Susie. Oh. Well, that might explain why he's overdue with that book. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Was there a particular volume he took out? Oh, is that yes? Um, is, is that is that the good doctor I see back there in the stacks? He he appears to be he appears to be sniffing books. I don't understand. <laughs> it's very dusty in here. Um, I do apologize. The library is not um, <laughs> well. We do our best. Just love that new book smell. <laughs> <laughs> These are very old books, sir. <laughs> um. Uh, which of course can give you halluc- have hallucinogenic properties. Um, yeah, was there a, was there a book on loan mold. that she she knew of? Uh, yes. Um, Most recent reading. She says uh, yes. He he. Um, in November, he came back to borrow one of the books he donated uh, that he said he wanted to read again. Um, it was um, it was. Uh, let me see. And she goes she goes through the. Through the file, through the little file, you know, the little index cards. Um, it was called um, The Missing People, The Tribe That the Jungle Swallowed by Thomas Pratt. And um, the doctor, I mean, you're, you're never far enough away in this library not to hear everything that's being said. The name Thomas Pratt. Uh, did you already do an anthropology roll? No. Let's have an now. anthropology roll, yeah. Hmm. Um... I fail at that, but... Rose, you're welcome to do another another apology, Rose, well, if you've got it. May as well. I mean, I've got 1%, right? Everyone has 1%. Uh, yeah. I've I've failed that by quite a lot, but I'd like to push it. Okay. If I can. Of course. Um, Always push a roll. 39. Close. But no cigar. (laughs) (laughs) I would like to push it. By, um, well, it's funny you mentioned the fact that you can have, uh, old, old books can have hallucinogenic properties. <laughs> he knows that, you know, he's, he's had a little, a little swig of vodka today, a few cigarettes, he's had a, a little dab of, a little dab of Coke. And now he's going to take a big old, <sighs> a big old snort of the dust between the pages of the book that he's fondling. <laughs> And um, and it's uh, just to see whether that stimulates some the synapses, synapses, <laughs> makes certain things connect, makes his brain work in a different way. This is kind of how kind of how um, Dr. Bergman works, really. Like he uses substances to stimulate his brain in different ways, and he's just trying going back into his memory palace, really, for Pratt, Pratt, Pratt. Who is this? Oh, <laughs> oh no! Was that oh a fail? no! Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> oh my god! <laughs> That's just what you want, isn't it? It's just what you want: a pushed roll, taking drugs, and then rolling a hundred, <laughs> and, and mentioning the word hallucinogenic at least twice. 
<laughs> yes, Ooh, yes. Fuck so me. the combination of the cocaine and the hallucinogens and the, the slight mm-hmm. and the, the the humidity of the room and everything, you you inhale and you, you get this rush. Your pupils, if anyone could see you, but you're safely tucked behind a few shelves. Yeah. The sort of dusty light that's falling through the <laughs> the uh, the grime covered windows, you know, sort of catches half your face as your pupils turn into tiny dots. Um, and you can hear Susan Arwell droning on about these horrible murders, and you suddenly see, um, coming through the shelves, just this figure of um, a man. It's all in silhouette, and um, he's holding something up above his head. It comes from a book ca- from behind a bookcase opposite you, just coming through the. He's coming towards the shaft of light. He's holding this this axe. And you can see as he steps into the light, he's wearing a kind of, um, you know, a blue military uniform from the Civil War. And he's got this insane expression on his face. He's covered in blood. And uh, as the light falls on his face and you get this sight of him, he suddenly charges towards you and the axe comes down. (sighs) And the books clatter off the shelves you like the axe is like God, do I have time right to draw there. my do I have time to draw my gun yes I draw my Luger I, I don't fire but I hold it my arm is tremoring I hold it um, to try and ward off this spectre or figure oh god and does he react does this figure react to no the books begin tumbling down and you can you can you can feel his breath He's in your face now. You feel the breath on you. Um, I can you give me a sanity roll. Oh, fuck me. That's a fail on my sanity. You lose a point of sanity. Your muscles spasm. And you fire. This was an Apocalypse Players production. For more information about the podcast, go to apocalypseplayers.com. Thanks for listening.